Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of The Spiritual Handyman, putting spiritual tools into the hands of the people that need them. Today, we are going to be talking to author, philanthropist, and entrepreneur, uh, also father and soon-to-be grandfather, go fella. Uh, this, uh, we're going to be talking with Craig Calavo and uh, listening to his story and learning about the messages that come across in his book, I Am God in Disguise, and So Are You. Remind everybody that we are live on YouTube every Thursday at 10 a.m. A brand new episode gets posted, so uh, please subscribe, like, and comment, and participate in the community. We're also on Instagram, and we have uh, a presence on Facebook and have recently been added to Spotify. So you can listen to the podcast version, the audio only, through Spotify, and we'd love to have you guys do that. And like, share, and comment, uh, giving us a little love in any of those places is powerful for building the show and getting the reach out there. So let's, let's get with Craig and, and meet him personally. Craig, thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show and participating. No, thank you. Jason, I really appreciate this opportunity to just get out there a little bit and share my message with your audience. So uh, uh, thank you again. Um, as you said, my name is Craig Colabo, and by the way, you said it perfectly. Woohoo! Uh, Phew! That's just relief. <laughs> I have heard it butchered many times, so you, good job. Um, I was born and raised in Chicago. When I graduated from college, I packed everything I owned into my Ford Escort, and it surprisingly all fit, by the way. And I headed south for warmer weather. Jason, I never, ever wanted to see snow again. Um, I ended up landing down in Texas, which I spent most of my adult life. And just until recently, about two years ago, my wife and I got tired of the heat. Have you ever been to Austin, Texas in the summer? Uh, oh, oh, yes. I, I have much time in the Houston, Austin, Dallas areas in the the prime springtime and the heat of the summer. So okay. I, I am aware it is, it is exhausting. 100 degrees and humid all summer. So anyway, to make a long story short, I'm now living in the Smoky Mountains. I'm in North Carolina. Um, average temperature in August is about 78 degrees. So uh, that's, uh, that's where my wife and I are now. My, my original intention when I began writing was simply to share some life experiences with my children. So my, my intention started very selfishly. Maybe all parents feel this way at some point. It's like, why should my kids have to go through the same crap, you know, the, the same pain and suffering and struggles that I went through? I mean, I kind of felt like, hey, I know stuff. You know, I've, I've learned a lot on this journey. So, so that's how the process started. Uh, I've been lucky for the fact that I've been a seeker for decades. And what I mean by that is I've been journaling for many, many years. So I've documented life experiences, aha moments, the good, the bad, the ugly. So, so when, I, when I decided to take this on, my kids are adults, by the way. They're in their, they're in their 20s. I pulled out these boxes of, of journals and notebooks and scraps of paper and just things I've been writing on for years, spread it across the kitchen table, and over a two-year period, tried to put it in some kind of an organized form. My wife really loved me taking up the kitchen table for two years, by the way. Um, so I don't know, maybe six months into it, I kind of stepped back and saw what I had. And I kind of saw the stories starting to take shape. And Jason, I kid you not, it, it was like someone gave me a secret treasure map. I mean, everything became so clear. And unfortunately, this treasure map was given to me in puzzle form, and those pieces were released every decade or so. 
when 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 I saw this treasure map in front of me, I was thrilled. But the thing is, I was I was both excited and terrified. And and the reason I was terrified is I knew deep down inside that I was going to have to do what you and I are doing right here today. And that's kind of petrifying to me. I mean, here I thought it was something I was just going to be writing and sharing with my kids. And now I knew I couldn't keep this to myself. So I guess you can say my mission now, Jason, is to just share this positive message with the world and to raise some money for some great causes. 100% of my ebook sales will be going to water.org. I don't know, have you ever heard of water.org? I, I have because you shared that. Uh, uh, your, your, your connection with that is, is how I became aware, but for sure, share that with our viewers and listeners, please. Okay, just real quick. Water.org was started 25 years ago by Matt Damon, and um, he's done a fantastic job. I mean, as you can imagine, there's a lot of worthy charities out there. But in my research, what I discovered was most of them focus on just distributing, whether it's money or clothes or food or shelter. And don't get me wrong, that's great. I mean, we need that. But there comes a time when charity really isn't enough. So what water.org does, they kind of remind me, it reminds me of the quote, uh, Lao Tzu, the Chinese uh, philosopher. He says, you can give a man a fish, feed him for a day, or teach a man to fish and feed him for a lifetime. And that's what water.org is doing. It has nothing to do with fish. But they are, they're going into these communities they're going into these villages and they're with their experts are showing people how to find water, how to, you know, build, uh, drill wells and build uh, public bathrooms, for example. So anyway, even if you don't want to buy my book, at least, at least check out water.org. So. I love it. That's a, that's a great avenue to give back and, and it's helping at the most basic level. Right. And I, I, I'm always a huge fan of that. And uh, I love that quote. That's something that I uh, include in my practice. It's, it's how I've actually based my interaction with people as, as, as a teacher uh, is, is, yes, I'll, I'll feed you. I'll give you a fish, but then I'm going to show you how to catch it because I, I, I don't have time to continue to feed you, right? <laughs> we got, we got other people that we got other people need fish too. So, uh, and, and then that person can help so many others. And, and all I ask is that if, if you've, ta if I've taught you something that's helpful and you come across an opportunity to share that with someone to please do it. And it, it sounds like that's kind of what you were gifted with. So you sort of did the, you kind of slid into the spiritual path. It sounds like, is that, is that accurate? It, it really is. I, it, I probably didn't discover my spiritual path until I was about 32 years old. And I believe we we're all born onto our spiritual path. In, in other words, life is a spiritual path. So the question might be uh, more of when did you become conscious of your path? And, and for me, the process of writing kind of for, you know, showed me that I was 30, 32 years old, and there were actually three events that occurred in my life. It was actually all in a one month period. Um, a girl I was dating invited me to go to a workshop with her, um, and the workshop was A Course in Miracles. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, almost all of it went over my head, because at that point in my life, I was totally unconscious, I was a sleepwalker. Um, I went there just to, you know, spend the weekend, you know, with her and to, to see what it was all about. A couple, a couple of weeks later, some friends of mine invited me to go to a church service with them. And I'm not a religious guy. I'm not a churchy guy. So I kind of laughed and, and, and declined. And they were like, no, come on. It's Unity Church. It's, it's really cool. It's, it's a different message. It's not like a traditional church. So I went along, and I have to admit, I was pleasantly surprised. Great music, uplifting, uplifting talks. So again, I got uh, 
a little dose of spirituality. And then uh, that same day at that church, I went to the men's room and in the hallway was a poster on the wall advertising an upcoming speaker. And that speaker was Wayne Dyer. So I bought a ticket. I went to the Wayne Dyer show and it was amazing. He was talking about the need to meditate and your inner guide and all that stuff. Again, I'm still real skeptical. I'm on the fence with this, with this stuff. But I went home, closed all the mini blinds, locked the doors. I didn't want anyone to know what I was, I was doing this weird stuff. And uh, I put on my headphones and I started to meditate. And I would say that that's when I reached, you know, what I call in the book, the discovery phase. That's when I really felt inside for the first time that I wasn't alone. And, and it was real exciting. So I've identified six stages that I think we all go through in this great adventure of life. We go through these stages whether we like it or not. There, there's no skipping steps. But what I am hoping, I'm hoping that my book might serve as a roadmap to maybe help people walk this path a little bit quicker. So, so Jason, you asked about when my path started. The first three stages are, the, the, the first three stages of life obviously start at birth. And I kind of sarcastically in a funny way, I call it alien birth. <laughs> and the reason I call it alien birth, the definition of alien, I jotted it down here. It was just perfect. Any being, foreign to the environment which it now exists, an outsider belonging to a very different place. You see, I believe we're born into this world, body and soul, and I kind of picture it, we're getting pulled out of this invisible world of pure spirit, and we're embedded into form, and that's how I picture birth, so I call it alien birth. We're quickly ushered into the next stage, which is the school of life. Everything during the school of life is designed to lead us to that discovery I mentioned when I was 32 years old. All of our experiences, all of our events, no mistakes. Me going to that Unity Church, seeing that poster, you know, no mistakes in life. So um, the first three steps, birth, School of Life Discovery, and I would say I was about 32. That was a long answer to your very simple question. <laughs> yeah, but that, that got us started in, the, in a great direction because automatically we can all recognize that we're already on our path. What a great way to explain that that allows us to, uh, to, you know, to, to get the right perspective on it because, we're, like you said, the, the spiritual path is is lifelong. It's always happening. It's at what point do you become aware of it, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's so many of us have been in the corporate world as, as you have as well and, and mm -hmm. still are. There's, there's, a, there's an aspect to us that is kind of straddled when we start to work in the spiritual stuff. You know, like you said, with the blinds and, you know, not telling anybody because it's, it's right. it, you know, it was kind of weird there for a little while. But there's, there's an aspect of us that recognizes everything that we've done, all the things that our past experience in this lifetime has, has made us into, has prepared us for what's coming next. I, I, was, I was a DJ for 20 years, so audio, video, speaking, all of those things came pretty naturally to me, and, and I didn't really understand why at the time. I just knew it worked, and it paid really well, so, so I did it, and, and it turned into... Uh, a love and a passion for doing this show because I get to do all of those things. I get to use the audio and video and play with the tools, but I also get to communicate and express myself. And, and that was something to me that's always been very important. So uh, the, the stuff that I did, I never would have guessed if you told me you're going to have an internet TV show that that was something was on my roster, but it was a natural progression. Thanks to, you know, to, to paying attention to what I've done. So I, I think a lot of people miss the fact that all of their experience is valuable. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. Th that really is a moot point. It's all experience. And, and that's really what we draw on 
so that we can move forward or we're what we call moving forward. Right. Well, you say, you know, what, regardless of whether it's positive or negative, and that's a really good point because I believe that the negative stuff is almost more impactful than the positive stuff. And what I mean by that is in a weird way, pain is good. You know, all, I think the universe is during this school of life I talk about in the book, the universe is always feeding us lessons. And like, like any school, if we're not paying attention to the lessons, they begin really gentle, like a gentle little poke with a stick. And the more we ignore it and rush, it, rush to the next experience, the more difficult, the more painful the experience becomes. <laughs> and after a while, it's like getting hit over the head with the club. And then finally, finally, and I've, I was one of the stubborn ones. I got hit over the head with that club so many times. Finally, we look within, we learn the lesson, hopefully make some adjustments, and then, and then move on to the next stage. You know, I was hoping to ask you a question. You, you brought up, um, you know, we have that kind of weird stage that we go through that we're hiding, you know, the spiritual nature that we're exploring. And some of the most common questions that have come up since the publisher re released my book um, earlier this summer were have you had vision you know I, there are qualifications to how did you write a book right did you have visions did you have a near-death experience uh was this book channeled through you and you know in all due respect to those questions it was not that exciting nor was it that weird so um do I have visions? You know, I do. I have visions every day. I am a firm believer in the positive, uh, in, in the power of doing affirmations and visualizations along with my daily meditation practice. And to just clearly envision how you want your ideal world and life to be, it's like, it's like freaking magic. So do I have visions? Yes, I do. I think, of, I think, imagination is the mind of god it's it's the engine for manifesting uh near-death experience no technically i have not had a near-death death experience but all the great sages and saints and prophets and mystics they all talk about the need to die while you're alive and I like to think of that as lucid living. Um, I'm sure you've, we all, we've all experienced lucid dreams. And the cool thing about a lucid dream for me, I think they're fun because you're not fully, you know, uh, consumed by the dream. So in other words, you're aware you're having a dream. So in that state, you can be bold and fearless and just go for it. Because you know damn well the alarm is going to be going off, so you, there's no stress. So, so my idea of of becoming, uh, you know, follow lucid living, is take that same idea, you know, be aware of the illusion that we're all living in. That gives us the freedom to be bold. And when our alarm clock goes off, and it will go off. You know, you don't want to say, you know, on your deathbed, ah, damn it, I just wish I would have been more courageous. So, um, so, so my question was, in a long roundabout way, was if we want to start a spiritual revolution and get more people to join this path, and I think you and I share that as one of our missions, and that's why you have this show, and that's one of the reasons I read this book. I don't want more people to awaken to this spirituality i think these questions about things being channeled and visions etc might make this path to someone who's a seeker seem really weird you know how do we how do we make it more accessible or, or more uh, relatable that's the word i'm looking for to the masses i mean we don't want to just preach to the choir because you know the choir us spiritual people who are you know think we're enlightened you know we 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 have our blinders wide open you know we're we're, we're into a lot of different things 
but I want to appeal to the, to the general population. Do you have any idea how we can make it a little more accessible? You know, I, I have a couple of thoughts on that. And one of those, Craig, is that what you've done already sets the perfect stage for that. And the fact that you're taking the time to get out there in different ways, not just with the book, but using the book as a jumping off point uh, to, to get that message out. I love the, the lucid living. That, that may be the title of your next book, quite frankly. But the, the, the reality of what you share is the everyday stuff. It was your journals from, from two years or however many years of your life. Uh, I think you said two years to put it together. But that authenticity is the key. Is, you're, you're so right in a lot of the stories come from this you know, gigantic experience or you know, this awakening or this channeling. And, and really... That is, that's the experience of that person. And it doesn't take us having something of that magnitude to get where you are, right? Because you, the, the, you're right. Proof positive that it doesn't have to be a moment at the base of Machu Picchu when the sun was perfect and the weather and the wind blew and ta-da, right? It, it I, was, wish, I wish it was that exciting, but it well, wasn't. Well, but the, here's the thing is for most people, it doesn't happen that way. Right. Right. Like I, I was in a motor vehicle collision and that's what launched me in the direction. Okay. And, and I think I might have been out of my body for a while. Like it's, it's all kind of blurry, but the reality was that the progression after that pushed me in a different way. And, and, and when I tell the story, it sounds very exciting. But when I just say it, like I got, I, I was in a motor vehicle accident like, and things changed. Right? And, and it's okay for it to be that simple because we're, we're going through life and whatever level of experience that we need to launch us is, is the right thing for us. So to me, sharing your authenticity and sharing your personal experience is the real gold. And that's what you've done in your book is share with people, you know, this is where I've been. This is what I've done. This is what I saw as a result. And it's, that's totally relatable. And for everybody at some level that's actually where we're coming from yeah maybe we have a springboard of some kind mm -hmm. right some experience that that we can anchor to but we're so much more than that and most of what we do is as uh quote mundane as everybody else's life you know everybody mm -hmm. does the same stuff just some people have a cooler job <laughs> right. Right, 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 right. So it, no, no, I, that's I, a, no, no, that's a that's a great point. And and before and Jason, before I start getting hate mail, <laughs> wait, I, the people who have the visions and the near death experiences and do the channeling, I believe that stuff is all out there. Okay, I'm just saying, if we want to attract a lar larger audience, I wouldn't lead with that stuff. You know, I would try to make it you know, a little more relatable. And, and what you're saying makes total sense. So my goal when I was writing the book the whole time was, how do I simplify it? How do I demystify it? Because I have read, go down that aisle in the bookstore, that's the spirituality and self-help, I've read them all. And I can't tell you how many of these books I've sat there with. Have you ever had an experience where you read the same page over and over and over again? And it's like, I don't think it's meant to be so complicated. Oh, that's so true. I, I, can put, I can put my whole message in a nutshell. I didn't want to start with this because I didn't want our show to be five minutes long. <laughs> but I believe we're born into this world as body and soul. We all share the same purpose in life, which, by the way, should be very comfort, comforting to many people who complain or worry or stress about not knowing what their purpose is. We all share the same purpose in life, and that is to discover the divine within this dormant power that's just patiently waiting. I call it the sleeping giant in the book. To discover, surrender, and inspire. So we all share that purpose. And during this grand adventure, I identify these six stages. And that's it. And, and I promise you, you might not agree with everything in my book, 
but you will definitely understand it. You won't have to read any pages twice. <laughs> I like that, that you have that, uh, that, that view of things to keep it simple. And, and in our exchange prior to doing the show, we both agreed on that, that simple is the easiest way. I, I also think simple is the most powerful because it, it, it makes it accessible and obvious and it's right there and it makes sense, right? Th those, those pieces are, are vastly important. So you, you've shared some really great insight and information and philosophies with us today, Craig. I, I so appreciate your authenticity and, and the way you present it. You're clearly passionate about, about what you do and about the message. Uh, and, and you do so many great things for others, like through water.org. Um, you've also got another website, Awesome Ohm. Will you tell, yes, us, tell, tell our folks a little about that? Sure. So the Awesome Life, and uh, the word awesome, it's kind of a play on words. There's no E at the end. And I use the O-M, like Ohm, like the Sanskrit, you know, symbol. So it's awesome, A-W-E-S-O-M-L-I-F-E. And Awesome Life is my tool to interact with the readers. I have a blog that I post to weekly. And also you can buy books there. I've got some free giveaways. I've also created some posters and prints. And the purpose of those products are to support the book. Um, I kind of, I, I believe that it's really easy to be, or I should say it's relatively easy to be in this state of awareness when we're on the yoga mat or when we're in meditation. But to take that off the mat and into the world is really the challenging part. So, you know, whether it's a cute greeting card or a poster or a print or a coffee mug with messages that kind of remind us during our work day, um, that's on, you can find that on the website as well. Perfect, perfect. That's how people can reach out and get to you and learn more about sure. what you do and uh, take advantage of some of those posters, which quite frankly, folks, are, are totally inspirational. Uh, I will share the links in the description. Uh, for those of us that are listening, uh, I am not saying to drive and hop on your phone right now and look at it, but uh, will, you, will you give us the, the Awesome Life website and spell it out for us real quick? Sure. It's A-W-E-S-O-M. L-I-F-E, awesomelife.com. Perfect, perfect. And I'll, like I said, include that in the description and uh, water.org so that folks can take a look and get to know more. Uh, you said you can buy the books, you can get the ebook there. I'm sure there's other retailers where those uh, publications are available as well. Oh, for sure. Any, anywhere you buy your books, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, etc. I've actually recently created these little mini versions of the posters. And they're perfect to stick up on your refrigerator or, you know, on the bulletin board at work, on your desk at the office. And they're freebies. So if you just email me your mailing address, I'd be, I'd be happy to uh, send it to you. Oh, well, be looking for my address, pal. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, some, of the, some of those little posters were just perfect, right? It's just that little reminder that that little piece that can, like you said, help, help us bring it from when we're really focusing and, and integrate it with our life throughout the day. And, and that shift doesn't happen all at once. So having little tools, little ways of amplifying that in our experience is really powerful. So thank you for, for offering that, uh, not just to our viewers and listeners, but, but to the world. And Craig, thank you so much for taking the time to share your journey and share all this wonderful information and philosophy with us. It's, it's all justly earned on your part. Uh, we just really appreciate you being on the show. Hey, thank you very much for the opportunity. All right, listeners and viewers, thanks so much for joining us for this episode of The Spiritual Handyman. Please take the opportunity in whatever media you are using to like, subscribe, uh, give us some comments. We'd love to hear the feedback and uh, we will see you and you will hear us in the next episode. The Spiritual Handyman, bringing spiritual tools to the hands of the people who need them. Sponsored by the Eagle Heart Foundation. The Eagle Heart Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that brings charitable contributions and 
educational enhancements to the people. So how can you be a part of the Spiritual Handyman and the Eagle Heart Foundation? The Triple Win Situation. This book was written by Granddaughter Crow, and half of the proceeds go to the Eagle Heart Foundation, which in turn sponsors the Spiritual Handyman. How to get it one? It's on Amazon and Kindle for only $9.99. So we are here to bring tools to you. Uh, thank you so much, Spiritual Handyman. We believe in what you do.